Madeira, Jewel in the Sun, and home of the package holiday. But there's a side that some tourists never discover. What did you see? I saw him taking his trousers off. Then take the boys' trousers off. I want that cruise. Where did that happen? On the beach. The holiday haven is fast becoming a sanctuary for paedophiles, and the authorities appear to be turning a blind eye. The to be honest, I have no knowledge of any cases where children are working as prostitutes. But with poverty on the one hand, and the demand of tourism on the other, the situation is escalating out of control. Exotic and accessible, in the bars of Amsterdam, the seedy business of child porn has singled out Madeira as the place to come. This film looks at what lies behind the myth of Madeira. Despite his reputation as a fun resort, Portuguese Madeira is one of the few places in Western Europe where children still beg on the streets. The average 12-year-old here is more likely to spend their early years hustling for money or prostituting themselves and learning to read or write. And each year, more and more children are turning to this way of life. Away from the bright lights, Communities like Camara dos Lobos are poverty-ridden shanty towns. Here, the combination of destitution, desperation and large families produces an endless stream of street children vulnerable to exploitation. They live in conditions so cramped that it's not unusual for a family of 12 to share one room. Fatima, like many children from the district, spends her days begging. She lives with her parents and four brothers in this tiny bedsit, a favour from the landlord, despite his neglect of the property. They're hoping for a council place, but the chances are slim. They will only give us a house when somebody gets killed. What about the bathroom? There isn't one. How do you manage to do your necessities? In a bucket, which we enter into a rubbish cart. We don't have a bathroom. What are we supposed to do? We have to throw it into the rubbish cart. Do you have to use a bucket during the night? Yes, when it's full, Fatima will take it away. What about the kids? Do they work? No, they don't. They go to school. Fabio and Fatima, my two kids. They go to school. Sometimes they're out begging. Well, it's better to beg than to steal. What happens to the money they make? Do you demand they go begging? Like I said, it's better to beg than to steal. The capital from Carl, and a short distance from the five-star hotels, Fatima's brother Fabio and his friend Duart count their change. They've been on the streets all day, and it's now 11 p.m. Tonight, their earnings are just enough to afford the bus home. And when you don't make enough to pay the fare, what do you do? I stay here. Here? Whereabouts do you sleep? in that bed of flowers. Both boys are not alone in roaming the streets for money. Although Fabio is not yet prostituting himself, his nighttime excursions are encouraged by his parents. I'll tell my mother I came to Funkal, but there wasn't anyone, so I caught the bus home. She'll tell me to wash my feet, have a bite to eat, just a little bit. After which she'll send me to bed, and tomorrow morning I'll come over here to Funkal and earn 2,000 mosquitoes. But they never had a chance to catch the bus. A few minutes later, they were arrested for what the police said was begging. Duarte's mother has been called to the police station. 
Not poor boy. Oh. <laughs> we saw him in the marina begging for money. And that's illegal. Yes, I know it's true. We understand that begging is better than stealing, but we have orders from above and he's not allowed to do it. But I didn't ask him to do it. Often begging is not the real reason young boys are arrested. Duarte was later caught in a public toilet with a German man, and the likelihood is it wasn't the first time. But with parents grateful for their children's earnings, the net of opportunity is cast ever wider. A juvenile's contact with tourists easily goes from begging to prostitution. This guy called Paolo. I went with him and gave him sex for 2,000 mosquitoes. Then there was 4,000 for Felipe. 4,000 for Combate. Altogether, that makes 10,000. Paolo and Manuel are both 16. They're part of a group of friends, some as young as 13, who regularly prostitute themselves. Because of the money to be made from sex, they often spend days at a time on the streets. Have you been with many homosexuals? Several. How much did they pay you? Three or four thousand mosquitoes? I went with an Englishman. He gave me over eight thousand mosquitoes. What for? For a blowjob. Did you get one? No, he gave one. Edgar Silva is a member of parliament. He argues that government policy is allowing child abuse to take place. This problem was camouflaged. The problem is being camouflaged, and it will be camouflaged as long as the political authorities continue to put up with it. It's tourism, especially the tourists implicated, that's creating child prostitution, not the children themselves. But tourism is crucial to Madeira's economy, and the authorities know they cannot afford to scare off the foreign influx. For paedophiles, Official laxity has turned Madeira into little more than a safe haven in which to practice their abuse. Dutchman Bart Rhodes has been living in Madeira for several years. Investigated by the police for paedophile activities, he's still a free man and seemingly still receiving teenagers at his home. Do you know Bart? I do. Have you had sex with him? Many times? Only once. How did it happen? He had some food and he wanted to give me some. He invited me to his house in Garajoire. I was there with him. I went to his bedroom. And he put on a pornographic video of men having sex. With the court case pending, Bart is unrepentant about his lifestyle. I have nothing to do with that kind of shit. And I know more or less how it is done. But, again... But you have restricted movements here in, in Madeira, yeah. haven't you? Of course, that's, that's normal, isn't it? It's normal. I don't have. No, 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 no. <laughs> Fine with you. F first of all, what what is your what is your uh, definition of pedophilia, Gish? Tell me, what's your definition on that? What's a child for you? Many believe that it's the sheer size of families in Camara dos Lobos, which is exacerbating the problem. Here, the birth rate is seven times higher than Madeira's average, and a large family without a proper income means children are pressured into finding money. For the fishermen, a constantly pregnant wife ensures marital fidelity. They're rarely at home looking after the children, and when not at sea, they're gambling, drinking or preparing for their next fishing expedition. With role models often absent, 
It's no wonder the children become difficult to control. With truancy now a major problem, it's often the parents who refuse to let the authorities intervene. When we are aware of this type of situation, and the parents will not give us permission to step in, we have to take the case to the children's tribunal. Because in my view, this is a dangerous situation and the Children's Tribunal has to have the power to take away parental responsibility. But in many cases, parents are turning a blind eye to the abuse of their children. This shocking video, which came to light recently, shows paedophile activities of 10 and 11 year old boys. It was made by a Dutchman and a Belgian was distributed in Amsterdam. Robert van der Naarten and Norbert de Rijk have been making pornographic films in Madeira since the early 90s. Their hunting ground is Camara dos Lobos and their meetings with boys are later sold to the underground paedophile trade. At first we thought they weren't pluffers. They asked us to go for a walk, to go to the hotel and have dinner. So we went to the hotel, only I didn't know they were pufters. They started having sex with these guys, and I went to take a bath. They were filming, and later gave me the camera so that I could film them. Then they filmed me, and that was it. They were having sex. What kind of sex? I don't know, sex. One told me to take off my clothes. And I said, I'm sorry, I won't. I was nervous because I was a minor. I was scared. But afterwards, I took them off. Marcel van Vloven is an anti paedophile campaign. From the headquarters of Merkhoven, a Belgian non-governmental organization. His investigations into the disappearance of minors unearthed an international paedophile network covering Holland, Germany and Portugal. In the subsequent raids, the police found several videos produced in Madeira. But Marcel believes these are just the tip of the iceberg. That the films die found are we know that in certain bars is, in Amsterdam, we weten ook in other films shot in Madeira were also shown. It's clear Madeira, there were more films made. Dat er films because the bar. films were found in different dus locations, dat de films ook op there was obviously material gevonden, which was distributed and sold. Dat de films zijn I don't know how many films we're talking about here. En dan zijn All I know for sure dus om films is that it involved dozens of children. What I know is that it's about tientallen children. Yeah. What do you think about these men? Yeah. If I could kill them, I would. Yeah. I hope I don't see them again, because I would go to prison for 30 years. Do you think you're abused by them? They abuse me a lot. Do you ever think about it? I think about it all the time. Marcel has a few doubts the film produced in 91 by de Rijk and van der Naarten is typical of materials sold in some Amsterdam bars. It promotes the image of Madeira as a paedophile's paradise. The intention was like, here are some videos, we filmed it ourselves. What do you think of it? See how easy it is to pick up a child. We don't have to pay them much. We give them a little something to eat, some clothes, a few coins, a few cigarettes, and we'll go with you. It's very easy. This was their intention. They filmed their own material, demonstrating how easy it is to abuse children, how they could easily find children, and how Madeira could become a focal point for all the paedophiles. All he needed is a few coins, a few cigarettes, and they'll go with you. But despite the evidence, the local authorities refused to accept there's a wide-scale problem of paedophilia on the island. Camaradas Lobos is not a paedophile's paradise neither Camaro dos Lobos or Madeira itself. There might be, and are for sure, children who sell their bodies. But when an island develops a reputation for offering child sex, any and every youngster is vulnerable to being approached. 
And that's what happened to Jose. He was confronted by a German man who offered him sex in a public toilet. I went for a wee and to have a drink of water. And he starts touching me and saying, fuck, fuck. I said, no. Did you want to do something with him? <laughs> he wanted to do it, but I didn't. Did you give you any money? Yes, a thousand scudos, not to call the police. But money to buy a family's silence, or fear of humiliation, means many abusive encounters with tourists go unreported. The recent police crackdown on nighttime abuse has only made some boys more wary of admitting to prostitution. And when complaints aren't made, the courts cannot proceed against the paedophiles. Even with a testimony, the Madeiran prosecution service is faced with a two-week abuser, a paedophile on holiday who quickly returns to his own country and the cover of immunity. It's possible they're eventually going to court in their own countries under Portuguese law. But that depends on international cooperation between governments. It's a puzzle which the public prosecutor will have to solve. In a landmark case in Madeira, a paedophile was recently extradited back to Holland to face prosecution. But such manoeuvres both damaged the island's reputation as a genuine holiday destination and failed to tackle what some now see as an impending disaster for the island's communities. Tourism is an important part of the national economy, but this and other factors have caused the problem to reach what is now a very dangerous and explosive social problem. As the island begins its war against the paedophiles, many are asking if Madeira can maintain its image as a tourist paradise. To do so, they will need to tackle the culture of poverty. Only then will its growing reputation as a paradise for paedophiles be erased. Please.